press conference as the Arkansas Attorney General Leslie Rutledge is planning to announce that she is poised to ban nearly all abortions in Arkansas. This comes after this morning's landmark ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. The High Court's conservative majority overturned the 1974 ruling, returning the issue of abortion rights to the states. Here in Arkansas, abortion procedures have already been paused at Planned Parenthood. The state legislature passed a so-called trigger law last year, signed by the governor, that will go into effect as soon as Attorney General Leslie Rutledge certifies it. The law bans all abortions in Arkansas except to save the life of the mother. The law has no exceptions for rape or incest. And that brings us to the called press conference. This is what Leslie Rutledge is apparently about to make happen. Now, from what we understand, there will be questions that will be asked by the press that are gathered in that room to question the moves, what happens next, the reasoning behind the position, and uh, we are waiting on them. This is, of course, happening probably in just about every state in the country in some form or fashion because it all has been left up to the states now to determine how they are going to handle it. And as we mentioned, Arkansas has a trigger law that pretty much foreshadows what is about to happen in our state. There you see Carlton Wing, uh, who is uh, a state representative. He is talking with Kim Hammer, who is from Benton. And they are, I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of the legislators are gathered in that room because they've had a hand in this procedure and actually in this decision, a major, they've been a major source for what we're about to hear. As uh, the room doesn't look that packed, but the impact of what we're about to see will be felt throughout the state naturally as it is being felt throughout the country. Asa Hutchinson has been known to call press conferences involving health care, primarily COVID, but this one is all about a Supreme Court ruling and its effect and its execution in the state of Arkansas. Boy, there are protests planned this evening in Little Rock at around 530. There'll be a hot protest. It'll be interesting to see the size of the crowd because of the weather, but the dramatic part of this decision, you have a sense, is going to invigorate opponents to the decision from the Supreme Court. By the way, interesting, the vote on the on the overturning of Roe v. Wade was five to four. Now there are six conservative judges, three on the left, three liberals. So why wasn't it six to three? Well, Justice, Chief Justice John Roberts sided with uh, the liberals in saying that Roe v. Wade should not be overturned. Now, when it came to the Mississippi abortion law that was brought before the Supreme Court that triggered this big decision about Roe v. Wade, the vote was six to three. All the conservatives were linked together in that vote, and that's why the vote differential is there. And there you can see exactly how the majority ruled in that decision. And with Arkansas, there was never any question as to about how this state would move once this decision was handed down. And once again, it's because of those legislators in the room. There have been a lot of questions about security for the judges, for all the people involved. And unfortunately, that's kind of the way we've gotten to in this country where rage and outrage continue to rule our reaction to some of these things coming down from Washington, D.C., especially Supreme Court decisions, which tend to be more dramatic and uh, also have greater repercussions, naturally, to all of us. But uh, we'll have to wait, wait and see how that plays out. And hopefully, your prayer is that the st nation and the state remain safe and calm and worked if they are against what happened, work in a peaceful, orderly manner to possibly overturn or to uh, uh, speak back to what was handed down today. But you get the feeling this one is uh, here to stay for a long, long while. As a baby boomer, I grew up in a country or became an adult when abortions were illegal and it had become a, uh, unsafe and was uh, a thing of degradation, degradation and almost uh, uh, it was a scandal if that had to happen. Uh, that changed with Roe v. Wade. But as that decision was handed down and over the years, especially with the Reagan administration, the noise began and the opposition began to make more noise and to have more of a presence 
over overturning that decision, which many, including Arkansas's congressmen, think was a mistake to begin with. And uh, they're setting up the microphones now. I get the feeling we'll get Leslie Rutledge and Governor Hutchinson out. But the point being that we have moved from Roe v. Wade to this point in time today over some, what, almost 50 years of Roe v. Wade since that decision was made a 50-year constant and growing opposition to that law that manifested itself politically. And you have to wonder about the repercussions politically with this decision, as Lightly Rutledge now takes the microphone. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all so much for uh, attending today's ceremony, this historic day in our state and in our country. Nearly 50 years ago, on January 22, 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court of the United States issued its opinion in Roe v. Wade. Because of this wrongly decided opinion, millions of innocent lives have been lost to abortion. None of us thought today would come in our lifetimes. Roe was wrong on that day, and it has been wrong every day since. I have a long history of fighting for the unborn, and that is why Arkansas is the most pro-life state in the United States of America. Because of my team's efforts to defend the great laws passed by the state of Arkansas and protect the innocent lives against the ACLU and Planned Parenthood and the likes of the radical left, we are prepared to immediately ban abortion in Arkansas with the overturn of Roe versus Wade. And today, the U.S. Supreme Court issued its opinion in Mississippi case Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. This case focused on a state law banning abortions after 15 weeks, except in medical emergencies. The case argued that Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey should be overturned and that states should be allowed to regulate abortion, not the federal government. On this his historic day, the United States Supreme Court agreed. The court held that Roe was egregiously wrong and deeply damaging. For reasons already explained, Roe's constitutional analysis was far beyond the bounds of any reasonable interpretation of the various constitutional provisions to which it vaguely pointed. Roe was on a collision course with the Constitution from the day it was decided. And Casey perpetuated its errors, and those errors do not concern some hidden corner of the law of little importance to the American people. Rather, wielding nothing but raw judicial power, the court seized the power to address a question of profound moral and social importance that the Constitution unequivocally leaves for the people. This overturns the legal precedent that federal district courts and courts of appeal across the country have used to strike down pro-life laws like Arkansas's. This decision essentially puts our pro-life laws in place and allows Arkansas to ban abortion with the only exception being to save the life of a mother, defined as a medical emergency. I want to take this opportunity to also thank the governor of the state of Arkansas, Speaker Matthew Shepard, who's also here with me today, members of the General Assembly, both the, Legis the House of Representatives and the Senate, and all of those who've been fighting for this day to come. At this time, I'd like to invite the governor of the great state of Arkansas, Governor Asa Hutchinson, to make a few remarks. Governor. Thank you, uh, General Rutledge. It's an honor to be with you here today on this serious occasion but important historical marker as you indicated. I'm pleased to be joined with uh, Speaker Shepard as well. I see senators and, and representatives here that's been uh, in this uh, fight for life for many decades and so uh, pleased that you have joined us for this historic day. In 1973 when I was a young law student at the University of Arkansas Roe v. Wade came down from the United States Supreme Court, establishing abortion as a constitutional right. Today, the court has reversed uh, the decision and said the original decision was an error. 
there is no constitutional right and the court returns the issue of abortion to the states. For me, this is a turning point for our nation. Since Roe v. Wade was decided, the states that desired to protect unborn life have been prohibited from doing so. Personally, I'm grateful for the court's ruling today because I have fought for a number of decades for greater protections for the unborn throughout my political life. And as governor, I'm gratified by the court's decision because the people of Arkansas have declared the public policy of this state is to protect the life of the unborn. Let me make just a couple of points today. First of all, this is not a nationwide ban. Justice Kavanaugh, in his concurring opinion, said to be clear then, the court's decision today does not outlaw abortion throughout the United States. On the contrary, the court's decision properly leaves the question of abortion for their people and their elected representatives. And so as a result of that comment and this ruling, what is the Arkansas response? Today, the Attorney General uh, has indicated that she will be presenting her certification necessary to trigger the Arkansas law that prohibits abortion except in the case of the life of the mother in a medical emergency. Justice Alito, in the majority opinion, said, we do not pretend to know how our political system or society will respond to today's decision overruling Roe and Casey. Well, we do know in Arkansas as to how we will respond, and the response is because the people have already spoken. And as a result today, uh, based upon the Attorney General's certification, I will be directing the Arkansas Department of Health to enforce the law and to conduct the necessary inspections and notifications to assure that any abortion provider is in compliance with the law and understand the penalties that are provided therein. Let me also emphasize that this does not put at risk access to contraceptives or other issues that are uh, tangentially related. As Justice Alito said, but we have stated unequivocally that nothing in this opinion should be understood to cast doubt on precedents that do not concern abortion. We have also explained why that is so. Rights regarding contraception and same-sex relationships are inherently different from the right to abortion because the latter, as we have stressed, uniquely involves what Roe and Casey termed potential life. People need to understand that we are dealing with the issue of abortion today and life, and that is what is at stake. I'd also point out that the state regulation of abortions can still be challenged, but not based upon a constitutional right. And this is an important principle. In other words, states can regulate, courts can review, but there's a presumption that the regulation is appropriate uh, so long as there is a rational basis for that regulation. And then finally, I want to emphasize that we need, as a state and as a nation, to continue to support women who have unwanted pregnancies, and for some, they see abortion as the only solution. And that is the reason the legislature anticipated perhaps this moment, or just simply anticipating the need provided $1 million to pregnancy centers across the state of Arkansas. Also enacted the Every Mom Matters Act that will allow those with uh, pregnancies and questions to call and to get information, to get assistance, to get help. That is being funded through our Department of Health. This is all before this decision today was rendered, but it reemphasized the importance as to what we have done, the steps that have been taken, and the need to continue to support women uh, as they go through what could be a traumatic time in their life. And I understand this will continue to be debated and, and protested across our country. Well, that is the heart of our democracy. And ultimately, the people through their representatives will guide the solutions and the answers that each state will present on reference to this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. In 2019, our General Assembly passed a law, Act 180,
that serves as a trigger bill to stop abortions in the state of Arkansas. And as the Attorney General, it is my role to certify whether or not the U.S. Supreme Court has in fact overruled Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, that thereby restoring to the state of Arkansas the authority to prohibit abortion. In light of the Supreme Court opinion issued today in the Dobbs case, I am proud to announce as Chief Legal Officer for the State of Arkansas that the United States Supreme Court has in fact overruled Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, thereby restoring the State of Arkansas the authority to prohibit abortions. In a moment, I'm going to step away from the podium and sign the certification. But this morning, and I, I apologize, Governor, but um, I was born in 1976, so I cannot recall where I was <laughs> when Roe v. Wade was <laughs> came down. But I will always recall where I was when the Dobbs decision came down. And as the first woman ever elected Attorney General, and as someone who it took a long time for God to decide that it was time for me to be a mom, I can't wait for other women across Arkansas to have that same joy of seeing their child's face that maybe they would not have seen had it not been for today's decision. So at this time, I'm gonna step away from the podium and I'm going to sign the official certification that prohibits abortion in the state of Arkansas. Before we open up for questions, I want to thank God because God is so good that he made today possible in America and in Arkansas. And so with that, I'll be happy, happy to open up any questions. Uh, there's a question for the, for the governor. Uh, governor, you've talked about supporting uh, rape and incest exemptions. This does not include either one of those exemptions. Do you plan on asking the legislature or either a special session or later on to add those exemptions to the stand? Uh, that's the will of the legislature. They've expressed that. That's a public policy of Arkansas. The certification is what it is in terms of uh, the exceptions for the life of the mother. I do not see uh, any additional action on that. Uh, the, the people have spoken on that through their elected representatives, and uh, that is uh, the law of the land in this state. So, you, so you, don't, you don't plan on asking them to take that up during the special session? I do not. Just a technical question. So the certification means the law is immediately enacted now? Correct. Okay. So Act 180 of 2019 with that certification has been enacted. Do, do any of you see, do any of you think the legislature should or should not look at going further? And, uh, you know, some states have talked about, you know, putting restrictions on women seeking abortions in other states. Is that something that you think would be wise for Arkansas to look at? I think today, Andrew, that we need to focus on this incredible victory and historic moment uh, in the law that we've passed in Arkansas. Uh, conversations that are had about whether or not we should change laws can take a place at the appropriate time uh, with policymakers. But however, today we need to focus on a fight that has been had for nearly 50 years to right this incredible wrong. And so I would encourage uh, anyone to speak with our legislators, to speak with me and uh, about potential uh, policy changes moving forward. Um, the 
it would be in case of saving the mother's life, but what about for high-risk pregnancies, like ectopic pregnancies that might not be, you know, a life-saving emergency at this point, but at the time of giving birth might be? Well, again, the, the law in Arkansas states that it is to save the life of the mother, and uh, we have included that. Uh, likewise, when you look at the opinion by the Supreme Court, uh, this was also uh, included and discussed in that opinion. And so we will, um, you know, Arkansas is already ahead of the curve. We were prepared in 2019 uh, to, with, for this court's opinion. It's almost as if uh, we had a crystal ball, and I'm so glad that we had that wisdom and guidance to have this ready. Would the mother have to carry a high-risk pregnancy to term? Because it wouldn't, would it necessarily be a life-saving measure at that point? Again, I'm, I'm going to say this as clearly as I know how and as clearly as the law states. The only time that, a law, that an abortion is legal in Arkansas is to save the life of the mother. Speaker Shepard, I understand that the Attorney General could comment on potential other laws being developed. Do you know what the sentiment is at this point amongst lawmakers? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there hasn't been really any other discussion. Uh, what we have in Arkansas is, in fact, we are the most pro-life state in the country. We took action in 2019, 2021, and even before that. And so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the law is settled on this point. We vigorously debated these issues, and that's what allowed us to be prepared uh, in the event that a decision such as this uh, were handed down from the Supreme Court. As far as other other laws or other things to be changed, I haven't been a part of any discussion on that. Uh, to, quite honestly, today I'm thankful for the fact for the first time in my lifetime as well, unborn children in the state of Arkansas are protected. And for the first time in my lifetime, the decision of abortion is returned to the people's elected representatives. Any other questions? Uh, one for the governor. You mentioned getting the Department of Health to make sure that well, of course, the uh, law provides for a criminal penalty. Let me emphasize for the abortion provider if they violate the law. So that is one reminder in the letter that will go to the abortion provider here in Arkansas. Uh, and we also emphasize that there's no penalty to a woman. Uh, that is was intentionally not criminalized conduct. Uh, there was only the abortion provider that the legislature looked at and that I signed into law in terms of uh, criminal penalties. Uh, and so the Department of Health responsibility uh, is uh, to uh, make sure that uh, any medical provider, in this case a abortion provider, uh, is uh, in compliance with the law. The law says that there's only one exception, as the Attorney General has said, uh, for abortion, and uh, any provider in Arkansas would have to comply with that, and the Department of Health will enforce that. So, is there any kind of inconsistency with the Supreme Court uh, ruling against New York's gun law yesterday on a state rights issue, and now there's another state's rights issue where they're, where they're moving toward allowing the state to make a decision on abortion? No, there's no inconsistency at all because uh, the uh, Second Amendment right is enshrined in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, so it's very clearly spelled out without any doubt. Uh, in terms of Roe versus Wade and what it created uh, as an abortion right, the court said it is not a right so it, because it's not in the Constitution. So because of that, uh, one is clearly stated in the Constitution, the other there is no constitutionally protected right which means that public health decisions like this are left up to the states. Okay, seeing no other questions, uh, we thank you all very much for your attendance today. And again, a special thank you to all of our legislators, policymakers, advocates, uh, such as the Family Council, Arkansas Right to Life, Susan B. Anthony List, and others uh, who have been working on these issues for decades. And so God bless you all. Thank you all so much. God bless Arkansas. As always, friends, God bless United States of America. Have a fantastic day. So. And you've been watching the press conference with Leslie Rutledge, Arkansas's Attorney General, Governor Asa Hutchinson, and the other person in the picture there was Matthew Shepard, who is the Speaker of the House, Arkansas House of Representatives. He is from El Dorado. Governor Hutchinson called it the Roe v. Wade was, has always been on a collision course with the Constitution, which made today's, excuse me, that was Leslie Rutledge who said that, it made today's decision in her eyes uh, more correct. 
Governor Hutchinson said this is a turning point for the nation. He's always been fighting for greater uh, protections, as has the Attorney General for most of her career to the point where it when it came to the point of giving her signature on Act 180 of the Arkansas Legislature, she got emotional because she's been working so hard on this particular issue. The problem they're going to face now is there's going to be pushback. And the tendency here is to think this is the final word. But history in America will prove this is not the final word. After all, protest over Roe v. Wade has been going on for close to 50 years. You cannot think that the protest will not now go the other way, too. We will see what happens. Once again, we'll talk about more on more of this tonight on THB 11 News at 5, 6, 6.30 and 10, and probably for a good time afterward. Thank you for watching THB 11. We now return you to your regular broadcast day.